Till this point, we have seen how to create a resource, how to fetch all the resources. When I say all the resources, I'm talking about the aliens, right? As you can see in the code, we have we do have two aliens here. We got alien one and a two, and we are returning those values. We are also uh, creating a new alien. But then, as you can see, we have created one more method here, which is public alien get alien, and we are trying to return this object again. We uh, if you if you find that object, example. Since we have two aliens here, we got uh, 101 Naveen and 102 Aarti. If I pass an ID as 101, I need to return the object of Aarti with 101. If I if I pass 102, of course I have to return 102 object. Now, otherwise, if it don't if it doesn't match us, it will return the empty object, so that will not get any exception. Now that sounds good, right? But then we have we don't have any resource here which accepts one uh, which returns one alien. As you can see, if you remember in Postman, we have seen. If I run this, if I if I fetch all the aliens, it will it will fetch all the aliens. It is working. I don't want to fetch all the aliens. What I want is I will specify if I'm fetching an alien whose ID will say ID is equal to one zero one. Now that this is this is how we execute in server technology, right? What we do is we specify question mark and then we say ID equal to one zero one. So that ID represents your that ID represents your query parameter. Now this doesn't look good, right? Uh, in Rust API, what you can do is you can say alien slash 101. Now when I send a request for 101, if I click on send, I want data for that particular alien. And as you can see, it is not working. We are getting exception here, which is one of our favorite, which is 404. In this situation, what we need to do is we have to get one more get method. Of course, we have to use get which returns XML, which will be having get alien names. And let's copy this so that I will not have to type that once again. And this time I don't want to return a list of aliens. I want to return a alien and we'll say get alien, which takes a ID. We'll do that in some time. And let's return, let's return repo dot get alien when you pass an ID. Time being, I will pass 101 just to verify if it is working or not. Right? But we have to make sure one, we have to check one more thing. When you say get request, you can see we have two methods here who, who's taking get request. And both this will work for aliens. What you have to specify is inside your aliens, we have to also specify alien. So I'll specify alien here. So I will say get request. No, not this one. I don't want to touch this one. Now here we have to we have to use one more annotation, which is add path. In this add path, we have to mention uh, the path. So we'll say if I send a request for alien slash 101. So if I send a request for alien slash 101, I have to return 101, right? Uh, this sounds good, right? I and mean, there's nothing wrong here. Let's get back to our our postman. Now, if I send a request now, can you see that we got an object? Now this is for 101. Awesome. But then if I send a request for 102, this is where the problem starts. Because if I click on send, oh, we, can you see that we got an error, which is 404. How to solve this issue? Now, of course, you something might have struck to your mind that we can create this method once again. Uh, this time we'll change the path from 101 to 102 and that perfectly makes sense. You can create one more, one more method here. But imagine if you have 50 aliens in your database or maybe you have 100 aliens. Is it a good idea to create 50, 100 methods? Uh, not exactly, right? So this 101 might change. Maybe I want to go for 102. So in this case, what I will do is I will say ID. Okay, uh, but then this will, even this will not work. How can you replace this ID with, with a number? Now, if you want to replace this number, if you want to replace this this ID with a number, you have to use a curly brackets. Now, this curly brackets means this ID is just a placeholder, which means you can replace this ID with anything you want. Example, if you write 102, this ID becomes 102. If you say 101, this ID becomes 101. But then how to store that value? Because if you want to use that ID here, of course, it should be a Java variable, right? In this case, I will say int ID and here also I will specify ID. So whatever data I'm getting here, the same data need to be assigned in this ID. But how we can do that? For that, we have to use one more annotation called as at, I mean at path param. In this, you have to mention whenever you get a whenever you get a request, and if that request has a ID in that, that ID becomes this ID. I mean this ID, which is here in the curly brackets, that represents this ID here, and then the value from this will be assigned to this particular ID. And that makes sense, right? This is this is how it works. Let's run this. 
let's verify if it is working. For 101, let's verify one, for 101 first and click on send a request. Oh, it's working. Let's go with 102, send, oh, it's working. Can you see that it's working for both the variables or both the values? So for a particular ID, you can mention, uh, you can change the value to 101, 102. Maybe you can, you can have any other value. Let's say if I go for 105, I know we don't even have that. Let's click on send and you can see we got blank values. That doesn't matter. What matters is whatever data you have in the database, you're getting that, that particular data, right? It, this is what we wanted. So yeah, that's how we work with this thing. In fact, uh, you, instead of uh, sending a new object, you can return null. And here you can check if it is null, you can send an error or something like that. But time it is working, right? We'll restrict the does. Okay, so this looks awesome. Now think about this. We are living in a world where we don't actually use XML. I mean, we, we do use XML, but XML is not the only format using which you can send response. Maybe you want to send a response in JSON format. And we have not seen JSON yet, right? As you can see, in this code, when you, when you, whenever you fetch data, you are getting a XML, XML data. What if you want to send a JSON request? I want, I want, I want to say, I'm, I'm expecting a JSON data. Now I'm asking my server, Hey server, you are returning XML. That's great. But I want JSON. The moment you say JSON, uh, not here, you have to specify. Okay. It is fetching in JSON format. What's wrong? Can you can see that it is not giving you JSON. So even if you specify, even if you specify, oh, we have to specify the accept parameter, is it? Accept parameter application slash JSON. Okay, so that you can see we are getting error. It says four not six not acceptable. So this is not accepting a JSON data, right? What we want is I want to return a JSON request. Now, okay, so you might be saying, okay, instead of using XML, we will be using JSON. But then if you specify JSON there, your application will, will only return JSON. It will not return XML. So I want to have uh, what you say, something called as content negotiation. So I want this to, I, I want my client and the server to go for content negotiation. So when a client says, hey, server, I want XML, server should say, okay, I will give you XML. If a client says, hey, server, I want JSON, your server will say, okay, take JSON. I mean, whatever format your client asks for, your server will return that particular data, that's important. How can we do that? And first of all, even if you specify JSON, will it work? We'll see that in the upcoming video. So that's it from this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you liked it, just click on the like button and do subscribe for further videos.